The president of the United States went to France today to tell the world that America is a country of lawbreakers, that most people in America would do what the Trumps would do, solicit illegal help from the Russian government in a presidential campaign. As far as my son is concerned, my son is a wonderful young man. He took a meeting with a Russian lawyer, not a government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. Uh, it was a short meeting. Uh, it was a meeting that um, went very, very quickly, very fast. Two other people in the room, they, I guess one of them left almost immediately, and the other one was uh, not really focused on the meeting. I do think this, I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. Honestly, I think the press made a very big deal over something that really a lot of people would do. Most people would have taken that meeting. But no one ever has. No one before Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort. Not in the history of American politics. No one has ever met with someone they thought was a Russian government official there to help them with Russian government information in a presidential campaign. It is against the law. The president told the world today that he doesn't consider that the fact that it's against the law, to be a reason not to do something. It's against the law, so what? In Trump world, most people would do it. New York Times reporting continues to show the tensions building between Team Kushner and Team Trump. Advisors to the White House, remember that phrase, advisors to the White House. That is how the New York Times described their original sources on the story of Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort's meeting with Natalia Veselnitskaya. They got it all, all of it, from advisors to the White House. And as I said at the time, that sounded to me like lawyers representing people in the White House. And to me, it specifically sounded like Jared Kushner's lawyers, because that's who would have all of that information. Those advisors to the White House are once again delivering information to The New York Times that is harmful to the president while trying to cast Jared Kushner in a better light. The Times reports that Jared Kushner, quote, met with Mr. Trump to discuss the issue, meaning that meeting with Natalia Veselnitskaya, according to advisors to the White House, around the time he updated his federal disclosure form to include Ms. Veselnitskaya's name on a list of foreign contacts that Mr. Kushner was required to submit to the FBI to obtain a security clearance. That is a direct contradiction of President Trump's story. President Trump's story has been that he didn't know anything about this meeting with Natalia Veselnitskaya until a couple of days ago, until basically last Friday when the New York Times started calling about it. But Michael Isikoff is reporting tonight that President Trump's lawyers, the president's personal lawyers, knew about Donald Trump Jr.'s emails about the meeting weeks ago, weeks ago, not a couple of days ago. Sources told Yahoo News that Mark Kasowitz, the president's chief lawyer in the Russia investigation, and Alan Garten, executive vice president and chief legal officer of the Trump organization, were both informed about the emails in the third week of June after they were discovered by lawyers for Kushner. Now, we told you here already that we know that the, about these emails because Jared Kushner's lawyers found them. That's how we know about them. The first people to read these emails after they were sent last year, the first pe people to read them this year were Jared Kushner's lawyers. Consider this passage in the New York Times. Mr. Kushner supplemented the list of foreign contacts three times, adding more than 100 names. People close to him said, so people close to Jared Kushner are telling the New York Times about Jared Kushner updating his security clearance application. Team Kushner is obviously an invaluable set of sources for the New York Times. But people in the White House, presumably on Team Trump, continue in the giant battle of the secret sources with the New York Times to try to make the president look better than Jared Kushner. Here's how the New York Times describes what Jared Kushner told his father-in-law about his meeting with Natalia Veselnitskaya. Mr. Kushner played down the significance of the meeting and omitted significant details 
According to two people who were briefed on the exchange, they said Mr. Kushner informed the president that he had met with a Russian foreign national and that while he had to report the name, it would not cause a problem for the administration. Now, there's only two people who could have briefed someone else about that exchange, Donald Trump or Jared Kushner. This passage plays better for Donald Trump than Jared Kushner, so this was no doubt not Jared Kushner's team of leaking, doing this kind of leaking for that particular paragraph. And it is stunning how blatantly Team Kushner is leaking to the New York Times and leaving their fingerprints in the articles, including this passage. Colleagues of Mr. Kushner said he had remained focused and upbeat despite the drumbeat of negative headlines, a trait they ascribe to his experience dealing with the legal troubles of his father, Charles Kushner, who was convicted of tax evasion and witness tampering. Now, there are a couple of things that are absolutely stunning about that sentence. One is it begins with colleagues of Mr. Kushner. Team Kushner just blatantly saying, yeah, we're anonymous sources for the Times, and here's something we're going to say that we think helps Jared. So colleagues of Mr. Kushner, that also means that those colleagues are sources of other things than the things they have their actual label on in the article. That's how it works. And they are no doubt sources for many other articles. This bit, this bit, the colleagues of Mr. Kushner, they thought this played well for Jared Kushner, that he's keeping his cool because he's been through this before. It's a reminder that Jared Kushner's father went to prison for tax evasion and witness tampering. And as we told you last night, the witness tampering was one of the most extraordinarily ugly nonviolent family stories you could ever hear. The witness that Jared Kushner's father was tampering with was his brother-in-law, his sister's husband. And the way Jared Kushner's father decided to tamper with that witness was to hire a prostitute who would then seduce his brother-in-law and did seduce his brother-in-law and make a video of her encounter with his brother-in-law. And then Jared Kushner's father, Jared Kushner's hero, sent that video of the prostitute and his brother-in-law to his brother-in-law's wife, sent it to his sister. That's what Jared Kushner's father did. And that's what colleagues <clears throat> of Mr. Kushner decided was a good idea to revive when telling that story to the New York Times about just how focused and upbeat Jared remains, because, hey, you know, he's been through this kind of thing before, a federal investigation in the family. Team Trump is beginning to recognize the dangers posed by Jared Kushner and colleagues of Mr. Kushner. But President Trump might be the last one to figure that out. Joining us now, Nancy Soderberg, former ambassador to the United Nations and deputy national security advisor at the White House under President Clinton. Also with us, Jeremy Bash, MSNBC national security analyst and former chief of staff at the CIA and Defense Department. Ambassador Soderberg, I, I first of all want to go to uh, what the president said today in France, where he basically stood up there and said, well, you know, most people would do this. Most people would have this meeting. Uh, he didn't say it's against the law and most people would have this meeting, but we all know it's against the law. And so we all know the president was saying most people, most Americans, most people who work in American campaigns would commit this crime. Well, first of all, it underscores how difficult it is to have members of your family that close inside the White House. You're always going to defend your family uh, first. We don't actually know yet what the facts are in terms of the law. Um, it's not illegal to meet with foreign nationals during a transition. It is illegal to take help from a foreign government. And there are so many questions still involved in here that it's going to be one drip, drip, drip. And the faster the president can break from some of these issues and move forward, uh, the better it will be. And he's unable to do that because it's, he's got to defend members of his family. So I think this is a story that's going to have uh, consume the the White House for some time to come. Uh, Jeremy Bash, your reaction to what the president had to say about this case today in France? Yeah, I think the everybody does it defense is going to be very hard to explain to Bob Mueller, 
for a couple of reasons, Lawrence. First, the meeting was with a government official. Second, it wasn't just any government. It was of a foreign adversary. Third, what was being advertised in the meeting and in the emails was support, a contribution, an illegal contribution from a foreign national to the campaign in the form of opposition research. And fourth, the email traffic from the intermediary explicitly said this was part of Russia and the government's support for Donald Trump. If you take all four of those factors combined, it looks a lot different than standard opposition research, which everybody does. Uh, let's listen to what Senator Mark Warner said today about these new developments involving uh, Donald Trump's family. We still anticipate uh, talking to Mr. Kushner. We, we have made a, a series of document requests, and uh, we expect to be receiving those uh, very shortly. Uh, we also, as, as recently as this week, have put out requests to um, Donald Trump Jr., and I'm going to take him at his word, just as I'll take Mr. <coughs> Kushner at his word, that they want to cooperate with the committee. Uh, Ambassador Soderbergh, uh, this is exactly the way these kinds of uh, the, the investigations expand. Some a story like this breaks, and suddenly uh, they have some very specific questions they'd like to ask Donald Trump Jr. as soon as possible. Well, and uh, first of all, on the opposition research during a campaign, it is not normal to have the campaign chairman. Uh, Paul Manafort and some of the closest associates of the candidate sit down and do this. You usually have a very separate team doing it. And this is a team that can't get their story straight. And whatever the original sin was here, whether it was criminal or just dumb, um, the problem always comes in the investigation and whether you're telling the truth. People always lie under oath, always try and hide the truth, and it's always the cover-up that gets these guys. So they better get their story out right away and get it straight. They're going to be under oath, so they can't redo the security forms or redo their statements. Um, and I don't think we still know the full truth of any of, any of these meetings. Um, and that's what these investigations are going to show, and it's going to take some time. And I don't think any of the current uh, statements that have been put forward will be the full story. There's a lot more here than we know. Let's listen to what Senator Blumenthal said today about Jared Kushner. I think Jared Kushner ought to resign. Either Donald Trump is lying when he says that he knew nothing of the meeting or Jared Kushner failed to tell him about it. Uh, Jeremy, your reaction to that? Well, I think, again, Bob Mueller is going to look at all those conversations and ask every single person involved, what did you tell the president and when did you tell him? Uh, it's interesting. The defense of Donald Jr. is sort of, he's not that bright and, and he doesn't know very much, uh, which is sort of uh, fainting with damn pra uh, damning with faint praise, I should say, uh, of the son of the president. But Jared Kushner is a bright individual with a very important job in government, and uh, I think he's going to be held to a very high standard. And Paul Manafort has basically made a career of being an expert on foreign agent registration, on lobbying disclosure, on federal election law. He clearly knows that it is inappropriate and unlawful to accept a contribution from a foreign government from the Russian government, particularly when it's delineated as part of a Russian government operation to help the campaign. Paul Manafort knows well that that is inappropriate and illegal. Jeremy Bash and Nancy Soderbergh, thank you both for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Lawrence. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.